Dr. Alyssa Morris, and I teach oboe at Kansas State University. I'm delighted to be able to talk with you today about the 2020 Kansas Allstate excerpts. These excerpts come from George Friedrich Handel's Sonata in C minor, and we will be talking about the first movement and the second movement. So I'd like to make two points about the first movement, and then I'd like to make two points about the second movement. So this beautiful, slow first movement presents a couple of challenges. I think that the most common challenge that it presents comes in counting. Baroque music, um, which is what this piece by Handel is, he is a composer of the Baroque period. Baroque music, very frequently in slow movements, is super slow. In fact, to the point that we will be subdividing by the eighth note instead of by the quarter note. And so I think that it's really important for you to know how many eighth notes belong in each of these really long notes. At the very beginning, we have a note that is seven eighth notes long. And if you are pulsing that eighth note beat, it's gonna help you to be able to make sure you don't skip any beats. So I'll show you what I mean. time figuring out how long this really long note at the beginning should be, you can play seven individual eighth notes to be able to figure out how to mental, mentally prepare for these subdivisions. beautiful first movement. The second point that I would like to make about the first movement is regarding phrasing. If I say to you the sentence, how are you doing today? How are you doing today? They mean two different things, don't they? So goes phrasing and music. If I play this phrase, play it with direction throughout so that it means something else. to our big phrase and it has direction throughout. So one of the things that you can do is point out where the phrases are in this first movement. Just go ahead and draw brackets around them and then circle what you think is the peak of the phrase. Where should you be the loudest in that phrase? And then see if you can crescendo to that point and if you can come away from that point and just see if that gives you more direction in your phrasing. Now I'd like to talk to you about a couple of points regarding the second movement, this wonderful, fun, and bouncy allegro. So the first is about technique. That's probably the biggest challenge that this particular movement poses is that there are a lot of notes. So sometimes we have to do what we call woodshedding, which basically just means practicing things over and over again until we refine our technical aspects of our playing. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tools that will help make this more fun and help you to become more even in your 16th notes. So I'm gonna take the first 16th note passage, is this one. Okay, so this one right here, I'm going to play it long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short in that rhythm. Short, long, short, 
long, short, long, short. I'm going to switch it and I'm going to play it short, long, short, long. Now I'm going to play it long, short, short, short. short, 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 long. And now I'm going to play it all back to the even 16th, the way that it's supposed to originally be played. And if you try this in all of the 16th note passages, starting really slow with the long, short, long, short, short, long, short, long, long, short, 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 long, then I promise you that it's going to make your even sixteenths much more even and much easier to play. So the last point that I would like to make, the second point of the second movement that I'd like to make is about dynamics. You might have noticed that in the second movement and maybe in the first movement too, I chose to make a couple of different dynamic choices than what might have been specified in your audition. So Handel, we mentioned that Handel was a Baroque composer and in the Baroque period, it wasn't very customary for composers to specify dynamics or articulation. And so often they would expect the performers then to be able to make those choices. In addition to making ornament choices. And we're not really talking about ornamentation right now, but if you want to have a lesson on ornamentation sometime, I would love to discuss that with you. So please send me an email and we can talk about ornamentation. Um, but so regarding dynamics in this particular movement, I've chosen to make a couple of different choices than maybe what was specified in my edition. And some of them are because of what I call sequencing or terrace dynamics, you might have heard it called that before. So a sequence in music is a little motive that is repeated over and over again at a different pitch class. That's a sequence. So I've chosen to play this one descending, getting gradually softer as it's gone down. So some sequences go up and you might crescendo in those sequences and some sequences go down and you might decrescendo and other times you might even decide to crescendo in the sequences that go down. Whatever the case, you've got to do something dynamically with your sequences because they are opportunities of building energy and building excitement. So we've got to use our dynamic capabilities to be able to propel that momentum as well. But whatever you do, Make sure that you are focused about your dynamic decisions and conveying them because this is going to add excitement and flavor and confidence to your performance. I appreciate the time that you've given to me and that I've been able to have with you discussing the Kansas All-State 2020 excerpts. Um, if you'd like to have a private lesson, I'd love to meet with you sometime. Uh, you can reach me at my email, alyssamorris at ksu.edu. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much and take care and stay safe.